Hello, everyone. Welcome to, to another Trimble webinar. Uh, this week is an exciting webinar where, uh, where Trimble and Amberg will be presenting together about tunnel surveying and, and a really recent, recent collaboration uh, between the two. Uh, so today with me, I have Alzbeta. Maybe you can introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks. Uh, my name is Alzbeta Prokopova. I work for Amerik Technologies. Uh, we are based in uh, Switzerland. Uh, we have offices close to Zurich, uh, but we have actually uh, partners all over the world. And I'm product manager in the tunnel department. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining today. And, and Alzbeta will be doing the majority of the, the presenting today with an exciting demonstration. So looking forward to that. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Riley Smith. I work for Trimble as a marketing manager in our tunneling and monitoring business areas. And I am based in Colorado in the US. So just uh, before we get started, everyone, if you are having any technical troubles, if you can't see the presentation or you can't hear us, please type that into the chat window and let, let us know as soon as possible. And we'll try to get that resolved. Um, at the same time, if you have any questions for either of us as we're going through the material, also put those in the, uh, in the uh, chat window and we'll answer those as we go and we'll save some time at the end of the webinar to, to answer any questions that we haven't. So with that, so today what we're going to start with is we're going to talk about Trimble tunneling uh, and, and what that what, what uh, our mission and what we offer is through the Trimble side of things. And then we'll get into Amber Technologies and their history in tunneling, which is long and quite a, quite a great history. And then we'll get into more on what, what Trimble and Amber are bringing to the tunnel surveying industry. And we'll talk about the applications and workflows in, involved in that. And then Elizabeth will take us through a, a great live demonstration of the Amberg software using uh, Trimble Total Station. And at the end of the presentation, we'll, we have some next steps, or if you want to find out more information or you want to get started trying out any of the software or any of the features that you see today, we'll give you some information on what to do next and, and of course, save some time for questions. So with that, we'll kick it off. So introducing uh, the Trimble tunneling uh, business. So we really focus on that core, core technologies that Trimble is known for, the positioning, whether that's total stations, optical, uh, laser scanning, or GNSS, and combining that with, with unique workflows for, for the tunneling projects. And it's really all about trying to be as productive as, as you can be on a tunnel project. As, as those of you who are familiar with and work in that industry, you know that there's that that the the faster you can get work done in the most accurate way, the better. And we really do that by focusing on the entire life cycle throughout a tunnel project, whether it's from the start, where we're talking more about geodetics, setting up the control network, doing site preparation, all the way through the construction phases, whether that's that's general construction purposes, whether that's convergence monitoring reporting deliverables all the way through to when a tunnel is finished, and we're looking at more uh, inspection and, and maintenance operations. All right, I'll let Elizabeth speak to this. Okay, so I will quickly introduce um, Amberg Technologies. So Amberg Technologies are part of uh, Amberg Group. And uh, Amberg Technologies has uh, four uh, units. Uh, one unit is a rail unit that is focusing on surveying on the tracks. Uh, then we have a tunneling unit focusing uh, on the measurements in the tunnel. Then we have a seismic unit uh, focusing on the uh, geology prediction uh, to find out what kind of geology we can expect uh, next uh, 100 meters uh, in front of the tunnel phase. And the fourth unit are the services. So we are providing uh, geodetic services, uh, mostly in Switzerland and surrounding countries. 
But today we will focus on a tunneling unit as we are talking about tunneling, of course. This is also the oldest unit uh, from Amberg Technologies. So this year uh, we are celebrating 40 years anniversary of our unit. This is the time since uh, Mr. Amberg, who founded the company, uh, decided that he needs to measure profiles and get the results in the real time and created uh, the first profiler with the real-time data processing. Uh, so today, many years later, uh, we still measure profiles, but hopefully we do it a bit faster and the computer uh, to process it is much smaller. Excellent. So with that, we want to introduce what we'll be primarily talking about today, which is a combination of the Amberg tunneling software with Trimble robotic total stations. So I'll play this video here and let you all watch this. Perfect. So I hope that came through. Everyone could see that all right. If not, the uh, the great thing about that is you can watch that at any time. If you go to uh, trimble.com slash Amberg, you'll, you can watch that video again uh, in case the audio or if it didn't come through or if you didn't, um, if the streaming wasn't quite fast enough. So that is available. So right now what we're going to do is I'm going to switch over. Give presentation to Osbeta. So with that, uh, while we're switching here, I just want to say, so what we'll be talking about today is that that combination of, of the Amberg field and office software with Trimble robotic total stations and data collectors. And, and what we'll go through here is, is, a, is a live demonstration of that and talk about some of the workflows and the, and the unique uh, unique applications that that can be used for. Thank you, Rayleigh, for the introduction. And I will jump right into the topic. So what we will be basically talking about then uh, also in more details and the, what we will see in the live video is the whole workflow that every tunnel surveyor has to do part of it, let's say, in the beginning of the tunnel construction, but most of it uh, basically daily uh, in the tunnel construction. So the first step there um, is always how to prepare the data. So uh, we get uh, some design, uh, axis, profile, alignment. Uh, we have to measure the fixed points, and we have to bring all this to the software to basically create our model of the tunnel. Then we define what we want to measure in the field. And then all this we will send uh, to the field, uh, to the navigator tablet. There we connect with the Trimble Total Station. And uh, we will carry out all the tasks that are necessary to do on the ba daily basis in the tunnel. So that's always first thing is to position the Total Station. And then we have uh, several tasks to uh, check the excavation, for example, measure profiles, but also to stake out points and uh, navigate uh, drill rigs, for example. 
all the results are shown uh, in the real time. So this is really the big benefit that we see the results directly and we don't have to go back to the office and process the data and, and come back. Uh, when we are done with the measurement, we will send the data back to the office and generate reports out of that. Uh, uh, so firstly, PDF that we typically have to print and sign, and then the others uh, like uh, DXF exports, overbreak, underbreak, volume calculations, and so on. Uh, so that will be basically the whole workflow we will cover today. So when we start in the office with the office software, so Amberg Tunnel uh, is, is name of the office software, and it's really a software which is created by tunnel surveyors for tunnel surveyors. So all the workflows, all the functionality is optimized uh, for tunneling. This is really one big difference compared to the other softwares uh, that are, let's say, more generic surveying softwares, but this is really a software focused on tunneling, which also helps us to have more efficient workflow and to deliver the results, uh, how the customer needs them in a shorter time. So what we always need first is to, to define the tunnel. So the first step is always the alignment. Uh, we can import it from XML text or grammar format or if uh, as surveyors, as to sometimes happens to the surveyors, if we got our data only in PDF, we can of course type them in, in the editor directly. The next thing to define are theoretical profiles, uh, typically several th theoretical profiles or several construction stages. So all that we can again import or uh, create manually, depends what kind of definition we got. Uh, then using theoretical, theoretical sections, uh, we define on which stationing, which profiles are valid. And with this, we create a 3D model of the tunnel, which is also great uh, visualization or a great check that the design that we uh, imported is correct. Of course, we do this for each construction stage. We can also copy the design between construction stages to make the work easier. And then we need to define the tasks that are saying what we want to do in the tunnel. So this would be an example of pipe umbrella definition um, in, in Amberg tunnel. Uh, in the live demo we will see in a minute, uh, we will use just a few basic tasks. But here I would like to mention that there are over, over 30 tasks for Navigator. Uh, basically, for every task uh, that surveyor has to do in the tunnel, uh, we have a, a specified task on Navigator. So you can really pick your workflow and use the task that fits your workflow the best. We can start from the excavation, from staking out the drill pattern, checking the profiles, then checking the shotcrete, uh, staking out support and arches, uh, staking out form work in the end and uh, many others. So for everything, you will basically find a task to fit your need. So with that, I would switch to the live demo because showing the slides is not so interesting. And I think that it's always much more fun to see what's really happening in the software. So now we see Amberg Tunnel software. This is the, the starting screen. I already have uh, my project defined. So here I have uh, already my whole construction site with several tunnels and also shafts. And uh, part of this uh, construction site is so in one of those tunnels is hidden uh, my office. And uh, we will today see the demo only on the kind of fake tunnel in the office because the tunnels typically don't have such a good internet connection. So here, now we will look at the project tree and we will see exactly the, the things that, that I was talking about in the same order as we need to uh, enter them. So it's all really, the, the workflow is really, uh, if you go line by line, this is, uh, this is what you need to do. So starting from the axis, so from the alignment, we have here in the editor, 
uh, defined horizontal alignment and vertical alignment that gives us the axis in 3D. Then as the next step in the design, we have the theoretical profiles. So this one is the theoretical profile of my tunnel. At this point, maybe I could uh, show. So I have just my tunnel on the wall. Unfortunately, not, not a real tunnel. But here we will have a Trimble Total Station and, and this kind of uh, small tunnel uh, that we can use uh, uh, for this demo. So this is the profile of the tunnel we currently have, smaller than the normal tunnel, but otherwise normal tunnel heading. And here in the theoretical sections, we have the 3D definition of the tunnel. So using the theoretical profile, we have here defined our tunnel in 3D. We can visually check that everything is fine. So this is for the definition uh, of the tunnel. As the next yeah. step, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a question for you. For yeah. the three for the design for the tunnel, can you import um, designs from other software like a CAD or a Land MX, Land XML file into tunnel uh, office? Yes, we can export XML. So basically we need axis in the in the land XML. So that's one we can import. From the DXF, we can import profiles. So not really a whole 3D model of the tunnel directly, uh, but if we get the profile, then we will basically extrude it along the axis. Of course, we can also interpolate uh, from one profile to another. So typically if there are more profiles, we will basically construct the same 3D model. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that question. That, that was that was a good one. I, I skipped that information. Uh, so now I continue to the control point. Uh, we will need them to position the total station in the tunnel. Also here I can uh, check in 3D where my control points are. Um, so that's also a, a good check that the coordinate system is the same like the axis and, and so on. Uh, so basically with this, I have uh, finished the whole, let's say, theoretical preparations. And the last thing to do before uh, we go to the tunnel is to define the tasks. So for each construction stage, I can define the tasks. So uh, the things that I want to do or I want to measure uh, in this uh, construction stage. I already have some tasks here, but I will define newly the ones that we will need. So I will just create a, a task. And the one which is, I would say, the most basic, but also one of the most useful tasks is point check. I will just give it a number to have it in order, but you can call it uh, whatever you want, basically. So I will call that check excavation. Also, for example, if you want your tunnel crew to measure something uh, on Monday, you can call this task measure Monday morning and then they know exactly when to use the task. So, so these tasks are what will be sent to the, to the field software so the crews know what the, the job is for the day. Exactly, exactly. Basically, the whole brain of the operation is in the office. When you will see how the Navigator tablet is operated, you don't need a fully trained surveyor to do at least some basic tasks. So then you can, for example, uh, cover profile measurements. Uh, if you explain tunnel crew just how to level the total station, basically the rest is very easy. I will create here one more task to measure profiles. So I will check here. Uh, profile measurement. So that will be the second task that we will do today. Here I have a bit more settings available, so I can basically choose uh, which uh, profiles or on which stationing and how many points uh, I want to measure. So my tunnel heading is, or my tunnel face is somewhere around uh, heading uh, 512, so I will define one profile there. 
and this my profile is, is really small so I will say I want to measure the points on the profile every 10 centimeters in tunnel of the normal size it would be rather every meter or every half meter but it again depends on the definition of your project so I have my points defined here and maybe I would say that I do not really measure the, the floor of the tunnel because yeah that's not really so interesting to document so I can also delete those points maybe I still want to have one point here on the side now I'm quite happy with this so I can hit the save button uh, if I if my tunnel is longer and I want to measure more profiles I can just uh, duplicate this profile and copy it to the interval so let's say from stationing 513 until 520 every meter I would like to measure the same profile I can just easily copy them over and have uh, my profile every meter. So this is basically how uh, the tasks are defined. Uh, I will show here one more, more task, task which I already have here prepared and this is take out of the blast points. Uh, so here uh, the tunnel that uh, is in my office is done with new Austrian method so this is now the blast pattern uh, for the next uh, blasting in, in one part. So we will then also try how to stake out the points easily with Navigator. And, and I noticed uh, at the top that you can look at those patterns and side top in 3D view as well? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for that. Of course I can. Uh, so my pattern is defined, uh, yeah here so I can also see see the blast pattern from side uh, from the top and also in 3D as you said so yeah. my favorite way how to look at the 3D is to go along the axis Oh, cool. So it's like you're kind of driving along the axis of the tunnel. Exactly. And then you can you can just move and and see what is in there. So now I have this blast pattern actually defined for my complete tunnel, but I could also add more patterns for different stationing. So for example, if I know that my geology is changing, I can also have a blast pattern for my geology type A, B, C. So I could just have three tasks and in each task I could have the geology or the, the blast pattern predefined for different geology. And then some, some, if somebody in the tunnel tells me, oh, now we have a worse geology, we have to switch the blast pattern, I have all the data with me. Cool. Uh, there's a question that came in from William uh, mm -hmm. asking, can you rename the point numbers once you've created them? I think that's in regards to like the profile measurements and the blast hole, blast points. Yeah, that's actually a very good question. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you can just, well, basically all these editors work a bit like an Excel sheet. So I can just uh, rename this point to 32 and the number is changed. Uh, for the profiles, it has a bit more meaning because uh, for the profiles, um, the points are measured in the order I define them. So now we will start from this point going to the right. For example, if I want to, oh, sorry, now I edit the point instead of clicking on it, I will remove this one again. So, but if I want to start from this point and measure anti clockwise, I can do that using this renumbering icon saying I want to start from this point and measure anti-clockwise and all the points are renumbered so I can do it one by one or for the profiles this is actually the easier way how to do that. Awesome, very cool. Okay, so now I will uh, store my settings, uh, close all the windows I have opened and we are ready to go to the tunnel. So I will export the whole project to Navigator. Uh, what is important to mention here is that the whole project gets exported. So 
all the tunnels, all the tubes. Mm. all the construction stages, all the tasks, everything is there. So I don't have to worry, for example, if there are some cross cuts and so on, if uh, suddenly somebody in tunnel will tell me, now we need you to measure the profile in the cross cut, I have all the data with me, so I am always on the safe side. So the well, data- while that's, mm -hmm. well, while that's exporting, I did have another question. When, when you're defining the control points, can those be um, imported from somewhere else? Yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, of course, we have a flexible text import. So basically you can import whatever text file or a CSV file. So basically uh, you just uh, define in Amberg Tunnel software in which column is which information and then you can import all, all your points, of course. <laughs> Okay, so now we have the whole project exported and uh, we will go to a navigator tablet. Uh, just to mention the export can be done. So typically I would export the data to my USB memory and then uh, use it for the import. It's also possible to send data via cloud. Of course, for that you need internet connection in the tunnel or somewhere nearby. So the USB possibility is still quite popular. Uh, on the navigator, I can have several users. So each user uh, who is using the, the tablet can have his own login. So then I can drag who was doing the measurement and everybody of course have a password. So in this case, I am the administrator. So I will log in as an admin. Uh, one difference is that the basic user doesn't have the settings. So as an administrator, I still can change some settings, uh, but if you give the tablet to the, let's say a worker who has no surveying knowledge, maybe you don't want them to change any of the settings uh, you gave. So in such a case, normal user cannot change your settings. So in the administration area, I will load the project. This was this was the last one I did. So loading project succeeds, so everything is fine. So I will go back from the administration. Also in the administration is all the connection with the instrument settings and so on, but you basically do this once and then uh, the total station and the tablet are paired like with any other Trimble collector, so you don't have to uh, care about it anymore. Now, as I said, uh, we have the whole project as we had it in the office uh, with us in the tablet. So I will select the heading uh, where I'm going to work. And yeah, my is the poster heading tunnel. So this is the poster I have on the wall. But I could in this way easily switch to any other construction site, any other tunnel I have in the project. Uh, so now when we look here, so basically we have the total station looking uh, roughly at, at our tunnel face. So I will zoom a bit on our tunnel. And the first thing to do is always to position the total station. So I will start with the biggest button. So that's quite intuitive to position the total station. Always next to the task, we have also the image telling us what this task will happen. So hey, in I case- to, I, I don't, We can't see um, Navigator if you're showing that right now. Ah, sorry, thank Any you. Problem? There you go. Is it better now? now? Okay. Okay, good. I will go. I will go one step back so you see how I got here. Okay, yeah. So this was the menu where we were, and we will start with the instrument position, the biggest, mo most visible button. So we will start with that. Uh, yeah. Here, as I said, the image 
telling me what the task will do so I can have here more options how to position the total station but mine is standing on the tripod so I select the tripod and press the play button to start the positioning process. So here you already see that it's not really something that you needed to study surveying for several years to manage this and it's really not getting more difficult along the way. So it tells me look if your instrument is leveled. If it's not it doesn't let me continue so I really have to level the instrument. Mine is already leveled so it lets me continue. Now it says measure the first point. So I have my control points here also on the poster where you can see them. I hope you see the laser dot. Yeah, the bottom center. Yeah, perfect, yes. So this is one of my control points. In this case, um, I don't have prisms, so I have to really uh, target uh, the points somehow accurately. Uh, if I have uh, prisms on my control points, of course, the total station will center to the prism automatically. So then I just need to uh, aim somewhere close to the prism and the total station will take care of the rest. So I will measure point number two. Also, the, the graphics is telling me what to do. So I need to measure the third point. Again, this can be uh, changed in the user settings. So if I insist on more than three points being measured, I can also force users to do that. But now I just measure the third point and uh, the software tells me that total station is positioned. So as you see, I didn't have to enter the control points numbers. So it took them automatically from the project. Uh, compared it uh, with the database of the points and figured out which points were measured. Here it's is just it, telling me. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, is it performing a resection or is that yes. what it's doing right now? Yeah. Exactly. Yes, it's it's performing resection. Yes. If it cannot find a unique solution, then I would get a choice of the options which control points are measured. But here uh, from the project, it's clear. So from the geometrical constellation of the points, it's clear which one I measured. So I got only one option. And now it's telling me just to make sure on which uh, heading stationing my total station is. So this is something that you typically know in the tunnel roughly on which heading stationing you are. So I know that this is roughly correct. So my total station is positioned well. So we can start with the real measurement. So the first task uh, we will do, so we defined our tasks in the excavation construction stage. And here are all the tasks that were also available in the software. So you can see that I have really the whole project with me. Again, the pictures are telling me what the task is going to do. So we will start with the basic one just to check the excavation. So it's really when the excavation is finished, uh, the, the rocks are cleaned and, and you can go there and you should, should just, for example, quickly check if they don't have underbreak anywhere. So for that, uh, the fastest thing you can do is basically I started tracking measurement and now I can move uh, the red laser around and basically every spot which is somehow suspicious I think maybe this is inside of the profile I get immediate feedback and I can check the point also if I want to I can store the points for the documentation it would be later on visible in the software as a, pro as a measured profile but it's really the fastest way uh, how to check if your excavation is roughly correct. So I can just move the red laser around, measure all the points I want. But so for it, sure, if, yeah, if it's red, go ahead. Red, uh, I'm just watching here. If it's red, if the dot is red, that means it's under break, and if it's green, it's over break. 
Yes, exactly. Uh, so uh, oh, um, underbreak is always wrong. So underbreak is always red. A little bit of overbreak. This is again the settings we could change in the office. Uh, is green, and I think that over 10 centimeters uh, of overbreak, I already have in the settings that this is too much. So hmm. it's also telling me in the colors you can set those limits according uh, to limits of your project, or according to the specifications of your project. So always the color dot is telling me is it good, is it bad, and then I can also see the deviation uh, from the theoretical profile below that. I can also see on which heading stationing I am, and uh, also in the left bottom corner, I can see uh, distance from the axis, so the local coordinates basically, in case I need it for something. So this is really a very basic task, which already gives me a lot of information. But if I want to measure profile, so let's say I somehow checked uh, the excavation and everything is fine. So now let's measure the profiles for the documentation. So I do not want to do that point by point because yeah, that's, that's really no fun. So we will use the automatic profile measurement. So we define the profiles in the office. So now we will just tell from which stationing to which stationing we actually want to measure the profiles. So I just point the red laser somewhere and say I want to measure uh, my profiles from stationing 512. Now I pick the point a bit on the side on the wall of the office to get actually different stationing. And here is a small message telling me that th there is one profile in this range. So this is the profile I defined in the office earlier. So that's fine. This is the one I want to measure. So I will start the measurement. And I have to press the start button to, to start it. And now you will see the red laser going over the profile. So here, um, as my tunnel face is quite flat in this case, or, or my tunnel profile, it's much easier for the total station uh, to measure the profiles. In the real tunnel, it would be iterating. So it would be searching the points uh, on the correct profile to really get the right results. Um, ouch. Now something, something went wrong. Tunnel is not big enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I did something wrong with the definition. Yeah, well, tunnel is not big enough. That's that's for sure one of the problems. But I think it it started to measure the points just fine. So let's give it let's give it one more try. Well, while it's measuring again, there was a question that came in. The uh, William asked about um, the resection or the, the instrument setup. So mm -hmm. the software is uh, is taking those measurements and then it's doing a best fit to find which of those points match the geometry that you've measured. So it automatically does that. I, that is the question. And then the second part of the question is. Is it also storing the the setup information for the instrument? So like the resection residuals and and like where the instrument was located when you perform that re resection. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it's it's ex exactly it's storing the geometry, uh, or it's sorry. Ah, now I think I said the the task wrong. So. Uh, okay, we will just have an ugly profile in the office. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I left the tolerance there too big, so I think that the tolerance is 20 centimeters or so, and yeah, then it doesn't really have to make the effort on the poster. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, yes, it's what it does. It's uh, comparing the geometrical position of the points, let's say, in the local system and 
in the global system uh, where we have the control points defined and it's doing Helmer's transformation from one to another. Um, it is storing the results. There is a log file where each result um, or each uh, position of the total station is stored, including all the accuracy. So you can always get this data uh, back if you need to investigate what happened. Perfect. Also, uh, what is there? Uh, there is again a setting, so you can give user a maximum sigmas he has to fit in, otherwise it won't be accepted. So you can also make sure that nobody will do uh, orientation of the total station. For example, with worse accuracy, that's one centimeter and I don't know, a second in, in angle or something like that. So this can be defined uh, by the user in the office or by the surveyor, let's say. Was that uh, the complete question or was there yeah, one part yeah, I, I think, missed? I think you answered it all. Okay, super. Uh, so we will move to the last task uh, we have for today and those are the last points. Now I measure roughly on which stationing uh, my tunnel faces in case I have more blast patterns defined based on this, the software will pick the correct one. And now I can just easily click on each point and the total station uh, will find it. Again, if the surface is more rough, it will iterate. Now it doesn't really have to make so much effort um, to, to find a point. Uh, so basically then I would just going uh, through the points, marking them on the, on the tunnel face. I can also uh, click directly on the screen or I can just keep pressing the next button and marking one by one. Also, there is a possibility as a documentation, I can store uh, where I stake out the point. Just if somebody asks later, I can say this is where the point was marked. Okay. So it's good to be always on the safe side. <laughs> so that little save button always stores the, the point or the measurement. Exactly, exactly. Basically the tasks like profile measurement uh, that already uh, by default are meant uh, for the documentation are storing the data without pressing any button. The tasks that are meant more for the stakeout, so here the, the main goal of the task is take the point. So if you want to save it as well, uh, there is the save button to, to store the point. And another question that Think is relevant to this um, from William again thanks for all the questions William if uh, if you fail a reflectorless reading so if it for whatever reason can't take the measurement does it skip the point or does it continue to measure or is there some kind of setting that tells it when it should stop measuring and move to the next one yeah good questions are all all very good questions thanks for that uh, there is a setting um, so I can set the setting in the office. If I am admin on the tablet, I can also change the settings in the field. So I can set the stakeout tolerance and I can also set the number of trials. So basically, if it will fail to find a point, it will try five times uh, with this current setting and then it will just give up and go to the next point. The same goes for the profile measurement. Awesome. And I think that actually the stakeout tolerance is where I made a mistake with the profile measurement uh, because I left here the stakeout tolerance, oh no, three centimeters, so that's that's not that bad. Um, but I think uh, that, yeah, I didn't force it to really find uh, the points close enough. Uh, shall I try the profile measurement once more? Yeah, if you if you'd like to, we have we we have plenty of time. Okay, then then let's go for that. I will make here my limits a bit smaller so the total station 
need to make some some real effort and start the task once more i will again tell the the heading stationing interval where it should measure the profiles hopefully it works this time so basically here for the speed of the profile measurement is also a quite a big difference oh, no something is wrong uh, but there is a quite big difference in the speed of the measurement uh, if the total station has the scanning option or not so with the scanning option is much faster because it's iterating through all the points on the profile uh, and it doesn't really make one point after another. So we also see that only after all the points are finished, they are shown on the screen. So that really speeds up. So now it's picked first two points. Um, really not sure why it, why it didn't work this time. Uh, but I have some another data examples that I can show in the office. So we will see the results anyhow. Um, so with this, I would transfer back from the tunnel to the office, uh, where we will see uh, how to how to process the data we measured. So first, or on our way from the office, we export the data again uh, to the USB stick, um, or send them via cloud if internet connection is available. But I can tell you that the USB stick option is used in 99% of the cases currently. Is there any options in Navigator to to do like a basic report or just an overview of that information? Like if I wanted to see for a specific profile what the underbreak and overbreak points were, can you do that? Yeah, well, we basically see that directly after the measurement. So we always see, uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, yes, the profile wasn't measured really nicely. I didn't show it really well, but uh, when the profile measurement is finished, I can click on the measured point and I see directly the overbreak and underbreak values there. So also with the red laser, I can uh, stake out the point. So also if there is, for example, some point with the underbreak over uh, on the profile, I can directly mark it with the red laser and uh, show people where is the underbreak, where is the place that should be fixed. Okay, perfect. So, so it's giving me the direct feedback. And then all the reporting, all the documentation is done in the office. Um, so from here, I just switch back to the office and import data uh, from Navigator. I have it's all uh, packed in one file, so it's easy to import. And I can also see here uh, a list of what was measured. So I see that in the excavation construction stage, I measured four profiles, three were when I uh, tried it with the profile measurement, one is stored that I did with the point check measurement. Uh, if I, for example, had scans or also profiles in some other construction stage, it would be shown here as well. And now this is really the the part of the software i like because now i imported the data and as the next step i can directly go to the analysis where the results are and now i want to analyze or export uh, the results of um, measured versus design so i can just go here well these profiles i measured today are not really nice so i will use uh, one of the older ones, which uh, yeah, were measured earlier today. Um, so I can directly uh, grab this and print it to PDF. 
So literally a few seconds after coming back from the tunnel, I have the report ready. Can you can you export the so you can print them as PDF? Can you export them in other formats or or to like a to a CAD file or something like that? Yeah, sure. That's uh, that's a great question. There are several other formats how to import it. I will uh, show them. Yeah, in in a minute. So here I have the the basic report basically. I see what was measured. I also see uh, heading stationing. I can have here a logo of my company. I see the volume. So basically, I have all the information I would typically need uh, to report in, in this page. Uh, so that would be something that people typically really print and um, give to their bosses or um, someone. Of course, there are some other or many other options what can be exported. I will show that maybe in the presentation because that's a bit uh, faster than exporting it one by one. It's not so much fun to watch it. So the first one is, all, of course, the, the graphical report I showed. The second one is the volume calculation. So overbreak, underbreak, uh, volume of the material, if we are talking about layer thickness, for example. So I can get all that also in a form of PT, uh, of a DXF, or I can also export all the information that are uh, on the reports in a text file. So I can basically get Excel sheet with all the calculations that were done in the software, just in case I want to do any other calculation or process it in any other way. And then the next one is, of course, uh, a CAD format. So we can export DXF. It's possible to export it in 2D and also in 3D. So depending how you want to process it further, uh, you can pick what kind of export you like. And the last thing, which is uh, again useful if you have a BIM, you can export a 3D model of the measured data in OBJ file and then import it to some other 3D software to further evaluate it. Uh, one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was, there was a question. Mm -hmm. There was a question that came in from, I can, I can answer this one, I think, but um, Leo asked, does Amberg Navigator run on my Trimble tablet or on, on other controllers, um, or do I need a specific one? So the answer, Leo, is it runs on any of the Windows-based Trimble data collectors. So the TSC7, T10, or T100 would all um, are all compatible with the Amber Navigator field software. Yes, okay. thanks. Thanks for that question. I will quickly jump back to the software and show one more uh, one more thing. I mentioned that we can also report uh, volume uh, of the of the applied material or volume of the material. So this is um, uh, this is mainly useful when you have, for example, when you apply a shot grid and you want to calculate how much material was there if you are. Uh, paid by cubic meter. Also, you can use profiling or scanning to calculate volume of the shot grid thickness. And you can get also this information directly in the field on the navigator with similar graphics as we see here. And then the volumes are calculated in the office. So that would be one more useful feature I, I wanted to mention there. And then I will jump back to the presentation. And we are getting closer to the end. Um, so as a bit of the overview, so uh, the key capabilities we have seen mostly today. So one is the guidance and stake out of the points, uh, easy to use and intuitive in the field, as built an excavation control, so point check profile measurement, uh, all the documentation can be easily measured and then documented in the office. Uh, there are also more guidance tasks. Uh, for example, when you need to drill pipe umbrella, we can also navigate directly uh, the machine to the right place and angle. Uh, shot grid control analysis. So this is the last one uh, we have seen. 
uh, we can use profile measurement or laser scanning to uh, check and document the shot grid thickness. Again, big advantage are the results in the real time when directly after spraying, a few minutes after, we can uh, check the result before the machine goes away and then document everything in the office. Uh, last two I didn't mention so far, but I will quickly jump onto the topic of convergence monitoring and um, also some scanning capabilities of the software. Um, so the Amberg Tunnel has also a module for uh, convergence monitoring, so basically to measure the convergence points and report them. There is also a task in Navigator to make this workflow easier. And then again, all the data are loaded back to the office and uh, we are getting uh, the reports di directly out of the measurements. So here we see an overview where we have um, the profile view and here it will be better visible. So in the profile view, uh, we can see how each point is moving. We can also exaggerate this more so it's better visible. Now it's again a small profile and just a small movement. And we can also see the movement in time. So we can see uh, the movement in the settlement, traverse and longitudinal direction. And always we can see how it develops in time. Also with the colors, we can set some boundaries. So for example, when we are here in the yellow or there can be also red color, it's telling me that it's over the limit more than was expected. I have to do something there. So this is also a functionality that we can find in the software. And last but not least, uh, we have also a scanning module. So today we did not scan, but I would just quickly uh, jump to, oh, so this is a profile analysis. I wanted to show a scan analysis. So there are also many functionality how to process and screen scan data, again, specialized on the tunnel. Uh, and we can see a uh, 2D view and 3D view, the colors are encoding the distance of the point cloud from the theoretical design. It's probably better visible in 3D view. So here we see the color from uh, with different colors. And if I turn on here the 3D model of the tunnel, I can see that all these uh, yellow and pink color are under break. Of course, the color scale can be user defined. So this is just how I have it now, but all the blue ones are over break. And here I can see I have a problem again in a very intuitive way. Great. Um, so with this, I would jump back to the presentation. So we are basically on the end, so this is this is what I wanted to present uh, from Amberg Tunnel capabilities. Now, if you want to take over, really, this was I think partially answered already in the previous question. Yeah, so we we only have one one or so minute left, so we'll just finish up um, the rest of the material here. There's not much left to go, and then there's some questions that came in, and we'll answer those. So. So just to, to wrap up on, on um, kind of next steps and, and clarifying some important points. So we were talking about the Navigator software and this, this question was already asked by Leo, so thank you for that, Leo. Um, but to reiterate, the Amberg Navigator field software is compatible with uh, the Trimble Windows based data collectors like the TSC7 and T100. Uh, and right now, Amber Navigator supports S-Series Trimble robotic total stations. So the recommended model is the S7. Um, the reason being, as, as Elspeth mentioned in the presentation, is the S7 has the scanning uh, option enabled, which uh, vastly speeds up the profiling measurements um, compared to non-scanning enabled instruments. So a lot of speed there in terms of measurements in the, uh, in the DR mode. Right, and in terms of packaging, so depending on 
on uh, what you need or, or how the crews are, are split up on the project. Some crews might be dedicated to doing profiling. Uh, some might be doing convergence monitoring. You, you can package the, the Amberg software really in, in the way that you need it for your crews. You can also get everything in one, one whole bundle if need be. These are kind of four of the primary packages um, for, for some of the major tasks, especially what we are showing today. So for instance, if you're, if you're doing both as building and staking out of, of blast patterns and, and rock bolts and so forth, there's a profile plus guidance package. And then you can split those out if you need those individually, you can do that. And as well for convergence monitoring, there, there's a module for that. And, and additionally, there's many others which we, we really didn't have time to get into today. And maybe we can do that in a, in a future webinar. All right, so last slide here for everyone. Next steps. So what I suggest anyone who wants to find out more information, of course, this webinar was recorded. So you'll all receive an email with that recording link. Feel free to share it with any of your colleagues. Uh, if you would like to start testing out the, the Amberg field and office software, I, I suggest you reach out to your, your local friendly Trimble distributor and they can help you get more information if you want to just do your own research and, and find some information, both on the Amberg and Trimble websites, you can find more information there. Uh, and, and as well, that, that same video we showed, as well as some technical notes that go more into the applications and the workflows. So all of that is available. So with that, let's, I know we're about two minutes over time, but I think there were some good questions that came in. So let's answer those. And then we'll, we'll end the webinar. So if anyone does have other questions, feel free to type them in now. So I'll just take a look. So uh, there was three, three, four or so questions that were all the same. So I'll try to answer those right now. So thank you all for all of you asking about uh, SX10, SX12 support with the with the Amberg software. So right now the Amberg Navigator supports Trimble S series robotic total stations, not the SX series. If you are using the SX10, SX12, and you want to, and you're using scanning, especially you can import that data into Amberg Tunnel Office. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head what formats are supported. I'll bet so maybe you you can speak to that, but for scanning, I think the major formats like LAS are supported. Exactly. We support the basic format, so PTS, LAS, E57. So basically, if you are using those instruments, you just need to position the data uh, in the field or in Trimble software and then load this data to Amberg Tunnel in one of these exchange formats, and then you can do the processing in exactly the same way. Perfect. And that would that would apply to any laser scanner. So if you're using an X7 or a TX8 uh, laser scanner, you could also get the data from that into Tunnel Office. So let's see, any other questions that popped up? Klaus is asking. This I guess this is more a question for you, Els, but uh, feel free to to answer this if you want. So the question from Klaus is: Is there a web version of Amberg Tunnel planned? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's actually a very good question. So we are going towards, let's say, a, a web environment. We already have an, a software to, for tunnel inspection in, in cloud environment. Currently, what you can do is that you can have a project start in the cloud and use it as a remote project. So you don't have to have your project locally, but you can have project on the cloud and more people can work on this project in the same time. This is as far as we got so far, but I believe that in the future we will move in this direction, but let's say not this year. Perfect. Thank you for the questions, everyone. It doesn't look like any more have popped up. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, a huge thank you to Elspeta for that great demonstration and going over the workflows in the Amberg software. I think I don't think this will be the last time uh, we'll we'll have Elspeta on a on a webinar. I'm sure that we'll have another one in the future.
Well, thanks for organizing the, the webinar and having me. I always struggle like what to push in, into such a short webinar. So I'm also sorry for the overtime because I think that the good software you can only recognize in the details. So when you start to really use it and test it and you really have to solve your problems with it. So I would really encourage people to get the demo and yeah, get the hands on the software. Yes, I, I agree with you there, definitely. So everyone, the, this will be recorded, so you'll receive a link uh, today, tomorrow sometime uh, with that link of the recording. And as Elspeth mentioned, if you do want to find out more, please reach out to your, your Trimble distributor and uh, get, you, get you going from there. But thanks, everyone. Thanks, Elspeth, and take care. And hopefully see you on another webinar again soon. Thank you. I hope to see you soon as well. Take care, everyone.